I found a girl when I was about 22 years old. She was a darling. She was a girl that went to church, German Lutheran. Her name was Brombach, B-R-U-M-B-A-C-H, come from the name of Bromball. And she was a nice girl. She didn't smoke or drink or, or she didn't uh, dance or anything, a nice girl. I went with her for a little while, and I'd, then about 22, I'd made enough money to, I bought me an old Ford. And uh, I, we'd go out on dates together, and so that time there was no Lutheran church close. They'd moved from Howard Park up there, and so there was a minister, the one that ordained me in the Missionary Baptist Church, Dr. Roy Davis, Sister Upshaw, the very one that sent the Brother Upshaw over to me or talked to him about me, Dr. Roy Davis. And um, so he was preaching. He had the First Baptist Church or the, uh, the uh, I don't believe it was the First Baptist Church either. It was a mis- called the Missionary Baptist Church at Jeffersonville. And he was preaching at the place at that time, and we would go to church at night. So, And we'd come back, and I never did join church, but I just like to go with her because the main thought was going with her. I just might as well be honest. So then uh, going with her. And one day I, she was out of a nice family. And I begin to think, you know, you know, I oughtn't take that girl's time. It isn't, it isn't right because she's a nice girl and I'm poor and, and I, my daddy had broke down in health and I, I, there was no way for me to make a living for a girl like that who had been used to a nice home and rugs on the floor. I remember the first rug I ever seen, I didn't know what it was. I walked around the side. I thought it was the prettiest thing I ever seen in my life. How would they put something like that on the floor? It was the first rug I'd ever seen. It was this one of these, I believe it's called matting rugs. I may have had that wrong. Some guy like wicker or something is laced together and laying on the floor, pretty green and red and big rolls worked in the middle of it. You know, it was a pretty thing. And so, um, I remember uh, I made up my mind that I either had to ask her to marry me or I must get away and let some good man marry her, somebody that would be good to her, could make her a living and could be kind to her. I could be kind to her, but I, I, I was only making 20 cents an hour, so I couldn't make too much of a living for her. And I, with all the family we had to take care of, and Dad broke down in health, and I had to take care of all them. so. I was having a pretty rough time. So I thought, well, I, the only thing for me to do is tell her that I, I, she, I, I just won't be back because I thought too much of her to wreck her life and to let her fool along with me. And then I thought if somebody could get a hold of her and marry her, make a lovely home, and maybe if I couldn't have her, I could, I could know that she was happy. And so I thought, but I, I just... I just can't give her up. And I, I was in an awful shape. And day after day, I'd think about it. So I was too bashful to ask her to marry me. Every night, I'd make up my mind, I'm going to ask her. And when I, uh, what is that, butterflies or something? Get in your... Uh, all you brethren out there probably had the same experience along that. And a real funny feeling. My face would get hot. Uh, I didn't know. I couldn't ask her. So I guess you wonder how I ever got married. You know what? I wrote her a letter and asked her. And so, her, now it wasn't dear miss. It was a little more, you know, on the love side than that. It was just not a, an agreement. It was, I, I wrote it up best I could. And I was a little afraid of her mother. Her mother was, she was kind of rough. And, uh, but her father was a gentle old Dutchman, just a fine old fellow. He was the uh, organizer of the Brotherhood of the Trainmen on the railroad, making about $500 a month. And them times of me making 20 cents an hour to marry his daughter. Mm. I know that would never work. And her mother was very, uh, she's a nice lady. And she, uh, she was kind of one of these high societies, you know, and prissy like, you know. And so she didn't have much use for me anyhow. <laughs> I was just an old plain sassafras country boy. And she thought Hope ought to go with a little better class of boy, and I, I, I think she was right. And so, um, but I, I didn't think it then. So I thought, well, I don't know, how, I can't ask her daddy, and I, I'm sure I'm not going to ask her mother. And so I've got to ask her first. 
So I wrote me a letter that morning on the road to work. I dropped it in the mailbox. The mail was going to church Wednesday night, and that's on Monday morning. I tried all day Sunday to tell her that I wanted to get married, and I just couldn't get up enough to marry her. So then I dropped it in the mailbox, and all at work that day, I happened to think, what if her mother got a hold of that letter? Oh, my, then I know I was rude if, if she ever got a hold of it. Because she didn't care too much about me. Well, I was just sweating it out. And that Wednesday night when I come, oh, my, I thought, how am I going to go up there? If her mother got a hold of that letter, she'll really work me over. So I hope she got it. I dressed it to Hope. That was her name, Hope. And so I said, I'll just write it out here to Hope. And so and I thought maybe she might have not have got a hold of it. So I don't better to stop outside and blow the horn for her to come out. Oh, my. And any boy that hasn't got nerve enough to walk up to the house and knock on the door and ask for the girl ain't got no business being out with her anyhow. That's exactly right. That's so silly. That's cheap. And so I stopped my old forge, you know, and I had it all shined up. And so I went up and knocked at the door. Mercy, your mother come to the door. I couldn't hardly catch her. I said, uh, how, how, how do you do, Miss Brumman? She said, how do you do, William? William. And uh, and she said, will you step in? I said, thank you. I stepped inside the door. I said, is uh, uh, Hope just about ready? And just then, here come Hope skipping through the house. Just a girl at 16. And uh, she said, hi, Billy. And I said, hi, Hope. I said, you about ready for church? She said, just in a minute. I thought, oh my, she never got it. She never got it. Good, good, good. Hope never got it either, so it'll be all right, because she'd have named it to me. So I felt pretty fair. And then when I got out of church, I happened to think, what if she did get it? See? Now, I couldn't hear what Dr. Davis was saying. I look over at her, and I thought, if maybe she's just holding it back, and she's really going to tell me off when I get out of here for asking her that. And I couldn't hear what Brother Davis was saying. Uh, and I look over at her, and I thought, my, I hate to give her up. But and I, I, the showdown sure to come. So after church, we start walking down the street together, going home. And, and um, so we walk to the old Ford, and it's all along. The moon is shining bright. So when I look over, and she's pretty. Boy, I look at her, and I thought, my, how I would like to have her. But guess I can. And so I walked on a little further, you know, and I look up at her again. I said, how are you feeling tonight? She said, oh, I'm all right. And we stopped the old fort down, and we started to get out snow around the side, walk around the corner, go to her house. And I was walking up to the door with her. I thought, you know, she probably uh, never got the letter, so I just might as well forget it. I'll have another week of grace anyhow. So I got feeling pretty good. She said, uh, Billy? I said, yeah. She said, uh, <clears throat> I got your letter. Oh, my. I said, you did? She said, uh-huh. Well, she just kept walking up. We never said another word. I thought, woman, tell me something. Run me away or tell me what you think about it. I said, um, did, you, uh, <clears throat> did you read it? She said, uh-huh. <laughs> Why? You know how a woman can keep you in suspense? Oh, I, I didn't mean it that way, you see. see but anyhow, you know, I, I thought... Why don't you say something? See, and I kept going on. I said, did you read it all? So he's almost to the door. And I thought, boy, don't get me on the porch because I might not be able to outrun him. So I, I, you tell me now. And so I kept waiting. And um, she said, Billy, I would love to do that. She said, I love you. God bless her soul now. She's in glory. She said, I love you said, I think we ought to tell our parent, the parents about it. Don't you think so? And I said, honey, listen, let's start this out with a 50-50 proposition. <laughs> I said, I'll tell your daddy if you'll tell your mother. <laughs> Rooting the worst part off on her to begin with. She said, all right, if you'll tell daddy first. I said, all right, I'll tell him Sunday night. And so Sunday night come, I brought her home from church, and I, 
she kept looking at me, and I looked, and it's 9.30, it's time for me to get going. So Charlie was sitting at his desk, typing away, and Miss Brombeck sitting over the corner doing some kind of a crocheting, you know, or them little hooks you put over the things, you know, I don't know what you call it. And so she was doing some of that kind of stuff, and Hope kept looking at me. She'd frown at me, you know, motion to her daddy, and I, oh my, I thought, what if he says no? So I started out to the door, I said, well, I guess I better go. And I walked to the door, and, and uh, she started over at the door with me. She'd always come to the door and tell me good night. So I started at the door, and she said, aren't you going to tell him? And I said, huh. I said I'm sure trying to, but I, I, I don't know why I'm going to go to do it. And she said, I'll just go back, and you call him out. So she walked back and left me standing there. And I said, uh, Charlie? He turned around and said, yeah, Bill. I said, uh, <clears throat> Could I talk to you just a minute? He said, sure. He turned around from his desk. Miss Brumback looked at him, looked over at Hope, looked at me. I said, uh, would you come out on the porch? <laughs> he said, yes, I'll come out. So he walked out on the porch. I said, sure is a pretty night, isn't it? <laughs> he said, yes, it is. I said, sure been warm. Certainly has. He looked at me. <laughs> I said, I've been working so hard. I said, you know, even my hands is getting callous. He said, you can have her, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. You can have her. Oh, oh, that's better. I said, you really mean it, Charlie? He said, I said, Charlie, look, I know she's your daughter and you got money and he reached over and got me by the hand. He said, Bill, listen, money ain't all things that's in human life. He said, I said, Charlie, I only make 20 cents an hour, but I love her. She loves me. I promise you, Charlie, that I'll work till these, the calluses wear off of my hands to make her a living. I'll be just as true to her as I could be. He said, I believe that, Bill. He said, listen, Bill, I want to tell you. He said, you know, happiness don't altogether take money to be happy. So just be good to her, and I know you will. I said, thank you, Charlie. I sure will do that. And it's her time to tell Mama. <laughs> I don't know how she got by, but we got married. <laughs> so when we got married, we didn't have nothing. Nothing go housekeeping. I think it had two or three dollars. So we rented a house. It cost us four dollars a month. It was a little old two-room place. And someone give us an old folding bed. I wonder if anybody ever seen an old folding bed. And they gave us that. And I went out to Sears and Roebucks and got a little uh, table with four chairs. And it, uh, it wasn't painted, you know. And we got that on time. And so then I went over to Mr. Weber, a junk dealer, and bought a cooking stove. I paid 75 cents for it and a dollar and something for grates to go in it. We set up housekeeping. I remember taking and painting a shamrock on the chairs when I painted them. And, oh, we were happy. We had one another, so that's all necessary. God, by his mercy and his goodness, was the happiest little couple could be on the earth. I found this, that happiness does not consist of how much of the world's good you own, but how contented you are with the potion it's allotted to you. And. After a while, God came down and blessed our little home. We had a little boy. His name was Billy Paul. And uh, a little later from that, about 11 months, he blessed us again with a little girl called Sharon Rose, taken from the word of the Rose of Sharon.